it's Ellen here and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to play Until I Found You by Steven Sanchez on the guitar. So stay tuned if this is something that you'd like to learn. And really quick before we jump into the tutorial, I wanted to take a second to thank today's sponsor, Enya Music. If you're in the market for a travel-friendly guitar, look no further than Enya Music's Nova Go. This half-sized guitar is made of carbon fiber, making it super durable against the elements like changes in humidity, heat from the sun, and it's water resistant as well. Plus, the small size and lightweight material are easy to take with you on the go. With the unique Enya logo sound hole and several fun colors to choose from, your instrument will stand out in a crowd just as much as you do when you're performing. I've been loving playing on my Nova Go and taking it with me whenever I travel, so if you're interested in trying one out for yourself, be sure to visit the link in my description box for more information. So I'm going to classify this song as more of an intermediate level for a few reasons, but first of all, let's talk about our guitar. You will need it to be in standard tuning with your capo on the third fret to match the original key. I'm going to show you seven different chord shapes today, and two of them are bar chords, which is kind of what pushes this more into the intermediate level. And on top of that, I only have one strumming pattern to show you that you can use for the whole song, and one picking pattern that's kind of optional, but I think it sounds really great. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial, and we'll start with the chords. Alright guys, so I've zoomed in a little bit to take a closer look at these chord shapes. We're going to start with our G, which looks like this, and sounds like this. And by the way, if you don't know how to read these chord charts that you're seeing on screen, I do cover how to do that in my beginner series, episode 3, so I'll link that right here for those of you who need it. After that, we have our E minor chord shape. Next is our C shape. After that we have our first bar chord shape, C minor. Next is our D shape. After that is our other bar chord shape, B minor. Last is our G7. And those are the seven shapes you need to know to play this song. Now if any of these chord shapes are new to you, make sure to pause the video and take a few minutes to practice memorizing them as well as transitioning back and forth between them because it will make it a lot easier moving forward. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the strumming patterns. So the first thing I would suggest doing is going through a practice pattern which is just one simple down strum on the beat for every chord change. This is great for beginners or people who have trouble singing and playing at the same time because it kind of helps get you used to the song and knowing where all those chord transitions are going to take place. Um, so as an example of how to do this, let's go ahead and pull up the chorus. So as you can see I have the lyrics here with the chord changes above it and all you want to do is go through the entire song with a single down strum and just kind of see how the guitar and the singing mix together. I would never fall in love again until I found her. I said I would never fall unless it's you I fall into. All right, and you would basically want to do this for the entire song. Just take a quick mental note of which word you're singing when those chords are changing. It'll really help you figure out how to do these other strumming patterns a little bit quicker. This is actually something that you can do right now if you visit my Patreon page, where I have the guide for this entire song available for download and printable, so you can go through the whole song with a single down strum. Just make sure you're used to that, and it'll really set you up for success as we talk about the strumming pattern. So I'll make sure to link that in the description down below, as well as in this iCard up here. But now let's go ahead and jump into the strumming pattern. All right guys, so the strumming pattern I wanted to show you for this song, as you can see, is just six down strums and it's going to sound something like this. So this song is going to be in 6-8 time, so when you count this strumming pattern, it's going to feel a lot like a waltz or something, where it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So something I'm going to add right now is I'm going to underline the first and the fourth down strum, and all that's going to represent is a little bit extra emphasis because we're going to just strum that down a little bit harder, and so it's going to make it sound a little bit louder. That way, instead of it sounding like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six. All right, it's really gonna help drive the rhythm of the song. So let's go ahead and put our G chords on and try that with me. I'll count us in and you jump in whenever you feel comfortable. One, two, three, one, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the rhythm for this strumming pattern is fairly intuitive, so let's go ahead and practice what it would look like when we put our chord transitions in. Now something to remember is that sometimes you're going to be holding this entire pattern out twice for each chord, and other times you're only going to play through it once. So for example, in our verses we have G to B minor to C to C minor, and what we're going to do is hold this out for our G twice, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then you go to your B minor and it's just once. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then on C and C minor, we're actually gonna break this in half and the first three downbeats are gonna be for the C chord and then the last three are gonna be for C minor. So that would go one, two, three on C and then one, two, three on C minor. So you kind of, it's like the whole pattern stays the same throughout the song, but you have to kind of think about where we're gonna be like breaking it apart, where we're gonna be doubling it up and things like that. So the whole thing without stopping would sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 So if you put the lyrics in and try the verse, then you can kind of hear how it all comes together. So let's go ahead and go through an example of that. One, two, three, one, ready, go. Georgia. else to point out is at the end of the verses when you go to that last G to D transition both of those chords are going to be held out twice as well so basically this song luckily is pretty repetitive so that's how you would play through all of the verses with this strumming pattern if you did it for the choruses let me go ahead and put that on screen right now if you did it for the choruses it's a little bit more straightforward you would basically play this strumming pattern one time for each chord so let's go ahead and go through a quick example I would never fall in love again until I found her. I said I would never fall unless it's you I fall into. I was lost within the darkness, but then I found her. I found you. And again, you probably noticed it already, but with that last C to C minor transition in the chorus, we will also be doubling the strumming pattern. But besides that, the rest of the chorus chords will just be played one time through with this pattern. So um, that kind of concludes the strumming pattern portion of this. You can apply this for the whole song. It sounds pretty great. But I actually did come up with a picking pattern that I think sounds really sweet with this song. So let's go ahead and jump into how the picking would look. All right guys, so I've zoomed in a little bit to take a closer look at this picking pattern. Um, if you are new to my tutorials, I do like to number my strings on my guitar. So the low E string is number six, and it goes five, four, three, two, one, all the way to the high E string, which is number one. So I will be referring to my strings as numbers for this portion. But basically this picking pattern is going to follow a pretty intuitive pattern. Your thumb is going to cover the bass string. So six, five, and four will all be covered by your thumbs. And then I want you to take your pointer, your middle and your ring finger and put those on the top three strings accordingly, okay? So your uh, pointer is on your G string, your middle finger is on your B string, and your ring finger is on your high E string. So when we're doing this pattern, the only finger that should be moving that much is your thumb based on the bass note of whatever chord we're playing. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. If you have your G chord down on your left hand, the bass note in your G chord is your sixth low E string. 
So your thumb's gonna be here on your sixth string, but again, these three fingers are on your top three strings, and you kind of just walk up the guitar, six, three, two, one, and then come back down, two, three. So for G, we have six, three, two, one, two, three. You can kind of hear how it has that waltzy kind of feeling. All right, the rest of the chords are gonna sound like this as well. So if you do your E minor chord, again, the bass note is still your low E string, your six. So this is gonna look just like our G chord. Six, three, two, one, two, three, six, three, two, one, two, three. I get this question a lot. Um, you might have noticed that the uh, chord that you're fretting, your E minor, we're not actually playing either of those strings, so you could take your whole hand off and it would sound just the same. I like to keep my fingers on there just in case you pick a different string. You're kind of covering yourself like an insurance policy. Um, but anyways, that's just something to point out. Next we have our C chord, same thing, except our thumb is going to move to our fifth string now because that's the bass note. So for C we have five, three, two, one, two, three, five, three, two, one, two, three. C minor is the same thing. Five, three, two, one, two, three, five, three, two, one, two, three. If we go into the rest of the chords, our D chord, your thumb would move to the fourth string, the D string, because that's the bass, but the rest of the pattern is the same. Four, three, two, one, two, three. For our B minor chord, your thumb goes to the fifth string. Five, three, two, one, two, three. And then the last chord is our G7, and that's gonna look just like your G chord. So you're gonna go six, three, two, one, two, three. All right, so that's how you would do the basic picking pattern for each of the chords in this song. You could easily use this for the entire song, so let's go ahead and go through the chorus, and I'll put that here on screen. What you wanna do is do this picking pattern one time through for each of these chords. I would never fall in love again until I found her. I said I would never fall unless it's you I fall into. All right, so that's kind of how you could hear it come together. It's going to follow the pattern of the strumming, right? So at the end of the chorus, when we go to C to C minor, again, you're gonna hold this picking pattern out twice. I was lost within the darkness, but then I found her, I found you. Hold it there. Ooh. And then on the C minor, you could either do that again, or you could do it just once and then strum it. I found you. So personally, I like to strum it that last time just to get back into the verses. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the verses now, because that will look a little bit different. So let me go ahead and put the verse here on screen. The picking pattern is going to be the same as we kind of went through. So G, and we're gonna do that twice, just like we did when we did our strumming, to be minor. Now here on the C to C minor, if you remember with our strumming pattern, we do need to break this, um, we broke the strumming pattern in half, so we're going to have to break the picking pattern in half as well. So what you wanna do is just do the first three picks for C, five, three, two, then you go to your C minor chord, five, three, two, all right? But something that I found is when I'm picking this um, verse, it kind of can be hard to make that transition and pick and have it sound clean. So something else you can do if you want to try it, um, this is what I like to do in my cover, is I will pick the C, five, three, two, then I'll just take my pinky here on my left hand and go five, three, and put it down here on the fourth fret. 
So you can hear that we're still covering that note from the C minor chord. Um, so it is essentially like you're playing the C minor, but you don't actually have to move your left hand on the C chord. So C, C minor. I just find that a little bit easier instead of having to, you know, move the whole chord shape. But um, whichever one you find easier is the way that I would go for this. But basically, the whole verse would follow the pattern like the strumming, except now we're doing this picking. So it'd sound like this. Georgia, wrap me up in all your I want you. And right here on the D chord, I like to go into the strumming. Oh, I used to say. All right. Again, if you wanted to, you could just stay on the picking for D. Oh, I used to say. And you do that twice. The reason I like to switch into strumming there is because for the kind of way that I play through this song, I like to strum the choruses and then pick the verses. So if you go into the D chord strumming, it leads really well into the chorus. I would never fall in love. Okay, so um, that's just preference. You should play around with this and figure out which kinds of ways that you like to put it together. But I will go through all of this during my playthrough at the end. Um, but before we leave the picking portion, there is one last thing I wanted to show you, which is kind of that intro section. So again, this is gonna be totally optional, but you do hear like a pretty fairly clear picking at the beginning intro of the song. This is kind of a way that I found sounds similar, but is easier to do. So basically you wanna start with your G chord on your left hand, but instead of having the three finger G like this, you do wanna put your ring and your pinky on to do the four finger G. Just for the intro, because we're going to utilize our ring finger here. So how you're gonna do this is just strum down once on your G chord. Then what I like to do is take my middle finger here on my right hand for the B string. You're gonna pick that while your ring finger is on and then pull it off at the same time. So it's like pick, pull off. So the pull off on my left hand, you'll notice I'm not even doing anything with my right hand. You should be able to kind of have like a flicking motion that will make that that note. So for G we have strum, two, pull off. Then I use my pointer finger and just pick the string right next door, the third string, the G string. All right, so. All right, so remember that middle note is only being sounded by your left hand, not your right hand. So your right hand is going strum, pick, pull off on your left, and then G string. Okay, um, next is our B minor chord. So again, you just wanna strum down. And then here what I'll do is I'll take my ring finger and go one, two, three, four, So again, for B minor, we have strum, from there we go into our C chord, again you're going to strum down once. This is going to look a lot like the B minor, one, two, three, four, three. Alright. And I'm using my same fingers on my right hand as well. Then you would end on your C minor chord, and all you want to do there is do the strumming pattern that we already learned. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then if you want to, on your left hand, you can also remove your middle finger. One, two, three, 
put it back down, one, two, three. Okay, so the C minor would sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, it's just a little extra way you can dress that up. Again, this entire thing is pretty optional, um, but I just wanted to show you kind of what I think is an easier way to make it sound similar at the beginning. So the whole thing is G. Then you go to your B minor. Then you go to your C. And then you end on your C minor and strum. And then from there, you would just go straight into the verses. Georgia. Or however you want to play that, okay? Um, so basically, that's just kind of an optional intro tab. I'll have that on screen here for you so you can see it. Um, but with that being said, I think that's everything I wanted to show you to play through the song. So let's go ahead and put all of it together to play through until I found you. I was lost within the darkness, but then. Want to have fun jamming out to the rest of the song with me? Then make sure to check out my Patreon page where you can unlock access to this as well as all my other fast track and play along tutorials. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description box down below as well as in this iCard right up here. Alright guys, but that concludes my tutorial for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you found it helpful, make sure to give me a thumbs up down below as well as subscribe to my channel. That way you never miss out on any other new tutorials. Another thank you goes out to Enya Music for sponsoring this tutorial as well as a huge shout out for all of my top patrons over on my Patreon page. I will have all of their names listed on screen right now. And of course, a thank you to all of my patrons for making videos just like this one possible. You guys are awesome. Here are my social media sites in case you'd like to follow me on any of those. That's just where I do fun things like behind the scenes looks at things coming up. I'll poll you guys on what you want to learn next and I'll even do giveaways on there a few times a year so make sure to check it out. But I think that ends the video today so thank you again so much for watching. I really hope that this helped you and I will see you in my next one coming out really soon. Bye! Thank mm -hmm. you.